Is it really because of your shoulder's rotation that your backside wind is not spinning? I mean, if that's the case, I should probably not be able to do these. A backside wind is actually composed of two elements. The lower body's rotation that follows the upper body's preceding rotation. And the lower body's rotation in reaction to the upper body rotating in the other direction. Combining them will help you land your backside windies more easily. Before breaking them down though, let's sort out the types of backside windies as a prerequisite. Broadly speaking, backside windies can be classified as a type that you pop and level it in the air, a type that you scoop with your back foot, and the type that you pivot on the nose. And of course, there are variations that you grab, but that's for some other time. In this video, we will analyze the type that you scoop, which is the easiest of the three, and the best way to get used to the backside rotation. You're watching Why the Trek. Thank you so much for 30,000 subscribers. Please subscribe. Question. Can you jump straight up and start spinning in midair? Probably not. This is because the law of conservation of angular momentum applies to all objects including the human body. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Alright, you're not the only one who's thinking that. For those who are not good at physics like me, simply put, the amount of energy an object has in the air is constant and it cannot increase its energy on its own. Not being able to gain speed in the air translates to the only way to rotate is to gain initial speed by being repelled from the ground. So it is understandable why some people try to increase the initial speed as much as possible by swinging their arms. However, what if you try to move only your feet? This time you should easily be able to rotate 180 degrees. At the same time though, your upper body should rotate 180 degrees in the other direction. In other words, an object can rotate in the air under the condition that the total energy remains constant. The exact same thing happens in a backside 180. Notice how my upper body spins clockwise at first, but starts spinning counterclockwise mid-air. This is because my body is trying to rotate my legs, but it needs to generate a force that cancels such rotation to conserve the total amount of angular momentum. So, by spinning my arms in the other direction, I can spin my legs backside. Please note when you rotate your legs with your hands folded, your arms should rotate in the opposite direction as much as your legs do. Whereas, your arms should hardly move when you spread them out. This is due to the difference in the moment of inertia between the upper and lower body. I know, sorry, but this concept is also extremely important. Simply put, it's a physics phenomenon that an object with a larger radius is less likely to spin. Imagine what happens when you extend your legs while spinning in a chair. You should probably slow down. The same thing happens in a backside 180. When you extend your upper body, its moment of inertia increases. This means, when you spin your legs in one direction, your upper body receives the same amount of force that tries to spin it in the other direction to offset the force that applies to your legs. But it is less affected by such a force. This further allows you to stabilize your backside 180 by enabling you to rotate your legs without having to rotate your arms as much as your legs. With that said, let's see how those concepts apply to a backside 180 according to the timeline. Starting all the way from the foot placement. Put your back foot on the toe side and the front foot just behind the front poles. While going straight, wind up your front arm toward your back. If the nose is at 12 o'clock, your leading arm should be at around 9 to 11 o'clock. 
Remember, this is when you scoop your backside 180. You might not wind up your shoulders so much when you pop higher. In this case, boom. You can see my front hand before my knee. So the higher you pop, the closer a backside 180 becomes to an ollie. But that's another topic, let's discuss it some other time. Going back to the main tutorial. Begin to shift your weight toward your toe side before lifting your weight. In a backside 180 that you scoop, it is important to push your board center of gravity forward with your back foot. And shifting your weight to the toe side helps you do this easier. We'll get back to this topic in a minute. Next, lift your weight and throw your front arm at 2 to 3 o'clock. Use the force of your front arm swings out and shift your weight over your front foot. If you jump at too much of an angle toward your toes, your feet may come off your board. So avoid jumping too far and utilize your front arm's energy and let your body swing out with it. Important, while extending your body, spread out your arms. This is to make the upper body's moment of inertia, or how much an object is not likely to rotate larger than that of the lower body. Extending your arms will allow you to rotate your feet more flexibly. Not to mention it also helps you stay in the air longer as you lift your body weight. Popping comes only after that. Since the tail is on the heel side relative to the center of gravity, you do not have to swing your back foot to spin your board. Just try to pop it straight down, and your back foot will naturally exert a horizontal force on the tail. If you locate your weight above your front foot properly, the force that the nose tries to lift will collide with the force that the body weight presses the nose down, creating strong friction on the front foot. Try to align this friction point and your body's center of gravity, and they will make a spinning axis. All that remains is to keep on pressurizing the tail in the direction you are going, and the board spins backside. And if you have trouble turning a board, practice scraping the back foot while rolling. Imagine it as a baby backside 180 without a pop. If you are not used to the feeling of a backside spin, you don't even have to pop. Lean your weight on the toe side. Start closing your shoulders. And scrape your back foot backside. While scraping, send your board center of gravity forward continuously. Remember, the scraping motion in this type of backside 180 does not finish instantly. It's continuous pressure on your back foot. The same thing can be said when you pop your backside 180. After popping, use your back foot to guide the tail all the way 180 degrees. Let's talk about it some other time. In either case, combining the upper body's initial rotation and the upper body's counter-rotation in the air makes backside 180 is much easier. Please give it a try. 